President Bush is yes. uh, not somebody uh, I've read about uh, who, <laughs> well, self-admittedly, he's, he's not into fancy book learning. Uh, but his administration has a, a seemingly a great love for semantics, uh, particularly around the word torture. But I wondered, how do you define torture? I, I think that I've been tortured by this current administration in many ways. I've never, I've never felt that the central issue here is torture. I think it, it makes it a much smaller issue than it really is. Don't get me wrong, I'm against torture. <laughs> You're taking that stand? You I are anti-torture? I am taking that terribly controversial <laughs> stand. But there's a bigger problem here. There's a kind of disrespect for what makes this country great, for what this country stands for. Torture is unmistakably part of it, but it is certainly not all of it. And so there's a much bigger issue, but you concentrate on the story of Abu Ghraib to begin with, and you do not talk about the administration directly. Abu Ghraib, by the end of 2003, is the intelligence hub of our war effort in Iraq. There are close to 10,000 prisoners there. We know so little about the place. The photographs show us just a small peephole into what happened there. And of course, uh, I think it's very important that we actually look at this place again. It's not a question of drawing people's attention once again to Rumsfeld or Cheney or Bush. It's not a question of finding a smoking gun. It's getting people to see the smoking gun and to want to do something about it. In all the years as a cop, over half of all my cases were solved because the criminal did something stupid. I don't know if I could take it mentally. I thought I could handle anything. I was wrong. The guy died, put him on a gurney, he was gone. Go about your business, keep working. That's the first time I started taking photos. Everybody knew. Everybody that was inside of that prison, they had the pictures. They gave me thousands of pictures from Abu Ghraib. Everyone tried to tell me, he's too old for you, he's a bad guy. He handed the leash to Lindy. I was blinded by being in love with a man. How could all this go on without anybody noticing it? The fear of the truth silenced people. Next thing you know, shoo, boom, incoming. Everyone's yelling incoming. I thought it was a good guard. He turned out to be Fedayeen. Smile in your face, stab you in the back. I took more pictures now to record what's going on. We were told no pictures of prisoners. And even though I was stupid enough to fall for it, I mean, he used me. Obviously, they covered up a murder, and that would just make them look bad. When you see a picture, you don't see outside the frame. I just thought it was a bunch of schmuck MPs acting like idiots. I don't think so anymore. The big word that always comes up for me is surreal. Everything that you saw. I'm amazed. I don't know how else to describe it. I'm amazed by the fact that you have 13 separate military, congressional uh, investigations. But no one tried to look at the whole. The investigations are almost like cover-ups. No one really tries to find stuff out. It's almost as if the goal is to obscure rather than to investigate. You say kind of like cover-ups? <laughs> or they actually are cover-ups in your mind? They are cover-ups. Uh, cover-ups of cover-ups, cover-ups of cover-ups of cover-ups. Witting, unwitting. Uh, I can't really say. I think in s certain cases people have tried to destroy evidence uh, and to obscure what happened there, absolutely. Let's, I want to talk to you uh, about the, the public for a second because it's interesting when you talk to people there does seem to be this incredible level of anger when you start to discuss these, these issues and yet you refer to their sense of denial as well. I think why, why is there that disconnect? Because I sense that people are rageful, but damn it, I'm not going to do anything about it. I think part <laughs> of the problem is the denial, the denial of the reality of what's happening. Because nobody, 
Nobody wants to take responsibility for this war. And everybody, or many people, have an easy out. I have an easy out. I didn't vote for him. <laughs> I didn't vote for him in 2000. I didn't vote for him in 2004. But yet I am a citizen of this country. I love this country. And I am involved. I made the movie because I felt that just somehow sitting on the sidelines was not okay. Uh, it seems like a very bad time for this country, and I, I feel just marginally better. Not so much better, <laughs> but marginally better having made this movie. But can you sleep now? Can you sleep I don't well? sleep well anyway, no, so okay, I never no, slept no. well. <laughs> but shall we make a pact? I will, I will personally, even though I didn't vote for Bush, take responsibility for the war right now. I will do my part and say I was responsible. Well, I think it goes beyond just simply saying I'm responsible. It, it goes, that was so easy. <laughs> I know. It's, um, I mean, isn't that the real question? I'm amazed by a, a lot of the press on the movie. Mm -hmm. um, people want to look at reenactments. They want to look at this, that, and the other thing. But they don't want to engage any of the issues. Uh, almost as if it's too painful, too horrific, too unpleasant, too distasteful to actually talk about. Here's my argument. Go see the movie if you're interested in people. Go see the movie if you're interested in a story about people, uh, the people who took the photographs. Go see the movie because it will give you the opportunity to think about some of these issues in a surprising and different way. Simple as that. That's a nice little pitch there. That's, that's good. It is. <laughs> yeah, thank you. If you like people, you'll like this movie. I think that's an inclusive yes, demographic. It's a, it's a people movie. Yes. It's a people movie. It's a people movie. Yes, it's a yes. Excellent a movie by and for people. <laughs> so.